Hi everyone, welcome to day 11, section 2.8, graph linear and absolute value inequalities. So today we're going to focus on linear inequalities and absolute value inequalities and their graphs. Okay. So one thing we have to remember when we're graphing inequalities is we have to think about a couple of things. The first thing we have to think about is if our boundary should be a solid boundary or a dashed boundary. and that is based off of our inequality symbol. Okay, It'll be solid if it's greater than or equal to or less than or equal to and it'll be dashed if it's strictly greater than or strictly less than. Okay, The other thing we have to think about is shading because the answer to inequalities, their graphs, are shaded regions. So let's take a look at our first example here below, where I want you to graph x plus 2y is greater than 4. So if we notice, this inequality looks very similar to x plus 2y equals 4, which is in standard form. So if it's in standard form, we would graph using the pinky method or the intercepts method. When x is 0, what do we get for y? So when x is 0, we divide by 2 and we get y to be 2. When y is 0, so we cover up the 2y portion, we get x to be 4. So we're going to plot those points of 0, 2, and 4, 0. Now before I go ahead and draw my boundary line in, I take a look at the inequality symbol. Okay, It's strictly greater than. So that tells us our boundary is going to be a dashed line. Okay, So now I just go ahead and I draw a dashed line through these two points. Now, I know I said to state three exact points, but when we're in standard form, simply graphing the intercepts is okay. Okay? Now, remember, the last thing I said we have to do is shade. Okay? So, what we need to do is test a point that is not on our boundary line and see if it holds true. So, I like to test the origin, 0, 0. Okay? Now, what I do is I check to see if it's true by plugging it back into the original. So is 0 plus 2 times 0 greater than 4? So all I'm doing is plugging the point 0, 0 in for x and y. And we should get the left side to be 0. Is 0 greater than 4? Hopefully you recognize that no, it's not the case. So what I'm going to do is shade the side away from where the point is that I tested. So I tested the point 0, 0, which is to the left of my graph. It was false, so I have to shade to the right side of my graph. And there's our final answer for the graph of that inequality. Okay? All right, so now I want you to try the next two examples on your own. Okay, graph the following. Um, state three exact points on your boundary, if applicable, um, and then go from there. Okay, so give it a try. All right, hopefully you had a chance to try. In uh, example A, we're going to use the intercept-intercept method, okay, or the pinky method. So I'd plot the point when x is 0. When I solve, um, I have to multiply both sides by 3. I get y to be 6, and when y is 0, I get x to be 1. So we go ahead, we plot those two points. We plot 1, 0, and 0, 6. Okay. And hopefully you recognize if it's less than or equal to, our boundary is going to be solid this time. So we go ahead and draw a solid line through these two points. 
and now we have to test a point to shade. I can still test the point zero, zero. So when we test, the left side of our inequality goes to zero. Is zero less than or equal to, tr to three? And we should say, yes, it is. So since it is true this time, I'm going to shade in the direction of the point zero, zero. So our graph will look like this, okay? So hopefully you got that right. If you didn't, make sure you come to class with questions tomorrow. Finally, with B, we should recognize that it's really y equals 4. So this is a horizontal line through when y equals 4. But we should recognize that it's strictly less than, so it's a dashed boundary. So when we draw our line, we've got a dashed boundary. We could include some points. We have 0, 4. I could also talk about the point uh, 5, 4 and negative 5, 4. We can still test the point 0, 0, only this time there's no x to plug in for. So I'm just plugging 0 in for y. Is 0 less than 4? We should recognize yes it is. So we're going to shade in the direction of our tested point and our graph is going to look like this. Okay, let's go on to the other side, dealing with absolute value inequalities. All right, so now we're going to focus on graphing y is greater than the absolute value of x plus three, stating five points on our boundary. So we treat this as if it were the equation y equals the absolute value of x plus 3. So we always start by stating the vertex. So remember from the other day, our vertex is h comma k, the opposite of what's inside with x, and then our k value. Well, our k value is really a 0. So our vertex is negative 3, 0. Okay. Our a value should recognize our a value is 1, so we use that to act like the slope. So we're going to plot the point negative 3, 0 using my a value of up 1 over 1 and up 1 to the left 1 of my vertex and up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1 again. And now let's just go ahead and talk about these points. So I'm at the point negative 2, 1 and negative 4, 1 and negative 1, 1, and negative 5. Oops, sorry, negative 1, comma, 2, and negative 5, 2. Okay, so now we have to look at our inequality symbol. It's strictly greater than, which means we're going to have a dashed boundary. Okay, so it's dashed. All right. And the last thing we have to think about is shading. Okay, so we want to test a point. Now, this point cannot be on our boundary, so we can test 0, 0 again. So when we test the point, we have 0 greater than the absolute value of 0 plus 3, which is 0 greater than the absolute value of 3, which is 0 greater than 3. Hopefully we recognize this is a false statement. It's not true. And now with absolute value inequalities, we think outside or inside, okay? Our point is outside of the V, and we said it was false. So that means we're going to shade the inside of our V, of our absolute value, so our graph will look like that, okay? So the only difference here is dashed or solid boundary and then shading. So I want you to try this last example on your own. See how you do. Okay. All right. Hopefully you had a chance to go ahead and graph that absolute value inequality. Should recognize our vertex is 2, 6. 
x for y. So if we plot the point 2, 6, our a value this time is negative 2. So I'm going to count down 2 and over 1 from my vertex to get some other points. And then I have to go in the opposite direction, down 2 over 1. So we include those points in our table. So I'll have the point 1, 4, and 0, 2, and then 3, 4, and 4, 2, okay? Based on our inequality, less than or equal to, our boundary is going to be a solid boundary this time. If we notice, the point 0, 0 still is not on our boundary, so we can go ahead and test that point in the original to help figure out where we're going to shade. So is 0 less than or equal to negative 2 times the absolute value of 0 minus 2 plus 6? So 0 less than or equal to negative 2. That absolute value of negative 2 is going to go to positive 2 plus 6. 0 less than or equal to negative 4 plus 6. And we get 0 less than or equal to positive 2 which is true. So we shade where that point is relative to our absolute value. That point zero, 0, is inside of our absolute value graph, so we're going to shade on the inside this time. Okay? If you have any questions on graphing inequalities, make sure you ask your teacher tomorrow in class. Okay? Otherwise, have a great night.